Chapter 7 Extent Data Sheets Static Properties In Chapter 2, we already introduced the two areas of properties in data sheets the general property area and the dynamic category properties grid. These two grids are the core elements in Create Edit Data Sheets and Data Sheets in Detail tabs. This chapter is all about the grid for general properties. This chapter lists too many learning objectives to keep in mind for now. Basically, we introduce you the concept of VDS dialog and datasheet definitions. Each property type, like text or numbers, date, boolean, or even thumbnails are applied in step-by-step -step exercises. The workflow. After completing all exercises, you will have extended edit dialog layouts and an enhanced detail tab for files. Exercise 1. Review datasheet definition files. Your first view behind the scenes. Open the file file.xml in your vault.custom configuration folder. XAML files are an XML file type. It is a part of Windows Presentation Foundation Framework, WPF as an abbreviation, and referenced in the outer node WPF main window. You can collapse nodes in Visual Studio Code from the arrows. Let's collapse the window resources in grid. Window resources node is used by VDS and holds mainly style definitions for labels and other objects in the grid node. The grid is our visible area. The main grid has two columns and two rows. The first cell has another grid object of name Grid General Props. The one on the right in the DS Thin Cat Prop Grid for dynamic properties. The bottom grid is called the Button Grid and holds the buttons. This is the Visual Designer in VS Studio. Going back to the XML view, the structure is best visible by collapsing the child nodes. Let's expand the grid general props. We can clearly see the row and column definitions. These are array-like structures, so they start with the number 0. Exercise 2. Add another label and text box. In the next 5 exercises, we add read-only properties, revision, type text to number, Checked in, type date time, latest revision, type boolean, and thumbnail, type image, to the edit file dialog. Remember, edit file and new file dialogs share a common dialog definition. Each label and text box can show or hide for the respective mode. Let's start with the revision property text box. Step 1. Add label and text box definition. Let's scroll down to the end of general properties grid and add a label like shown. Now insert a text box definition. This will be bound to the revision property value. We have two different binding types, a regular binding and a validated binding. The regular binding should be used where there are no requirements for the property. The validated binding should be used when there are enforced rules on the property, like minimum length or requires value. As a result, both elements are added below the path. But hey, something is missing here. The borderline element is not rendered because VDS expects the path to be the last element in the grid. Step 2. Set row order. Before adjusting the order of the properties, we need to add row definitions to have 11 rows. Having enough rows, let's change the row numbers from the properties. Please note that the attribute grid row sets the order. The line numbers and orders of the node in the XML file do not influence the arrangement. 
We haven't used the rows 6, 7 and 9 because of the row definition height is set to auto. Step 3. Set visibility. All properties we are adding to our file XAML are read-only system properties which are not available while creating a file. We should implement that. Let's see the visibility attribute to collapsed for the create mode and visible for the edit mode. These are type boolean, either true or false. So converting the visibility from true or false will solve this issue. As a best practice, we recommend setting the visibility for the element displaying the content and then link the visibility of labels to its state. So here is the visibility check for the text box. Now back to the text box, we need to put a unique element name txt revision. Back to the label, create a visibility binding with elements name txt revision. As a result, the edit dialog continues to display the raw revision and the new file dialog hides the elements. Exercise 3. Display date time values. Date values can display as text. There is no restriction. Many users appreciate reading date values in the format that cuts time and reflects the regional formatting of day, month, and year. VDS uses date picker controls to replace text boxes. Add another label to indicate the check-in property. Let's add a date time. The date picker control is used to show the dates. The content of this control is represented by the attribute selected date. To display variable values, a binding to the vault property applies to this attribute, like previously applied for text content. Note that for this exercise, we disabled the user interaction is enabled equals false because of the read-only behavior of the system property. The result looks like this. Exercise 4. Display boolean value. True or false values can display using a checkbox. Let's use this control type to replace true or false text display. Let's add a checkbox for latest release revision. Again, a binding to the vault property fills the content is checked. We need to align the checkbox for visual purposes. Vertical alignment, center, and get a margin of 5000. XML is like HTML. The order is left, top, right, and bottom. So we give 5 to left here. Put the binding of visibility and repeat the non step of adding a label.
Exercise 5. Add thumbnail image. Data standard dialogs and data sheets can display images and icons linked to physical files and to vault property of type image. The definition of an image control follows the same principle that we applied for text, date, and Boolean types already. We need to add an image tag with source as binding. Let's see how the image looks like. It uses all the available width of the label and value column because we added the attributes grid.columnspan2 and stretch uniform to fill. Exercise 6 Custom Detail tab. Data standard administrators can add more tabs to the detail wheel without programming. VDS creates detail tabs during the application load process by reading datasheet definition files in the configuration folder for each entity type. Step 1. Copy datasheet SAML. We can add another detail tab by copy-pasting the existing datasheet file. The structure is similar with the dialog definition file we edited earlier in the exercises. Visible controls are grouped by two grid levels. Step 2. Customize datasheet copy. Now we need to add a raw definition to the inner grid. We need to insert an image control definition. Be careful here. Adjust the grid row to 5 and remove the visibility attribute. It's not needed in the context of a detail tab. Step 3. Restart Vault Explorer. Restarting loads the added datasheet. Step 4. Distribute column widths. We should always prefer visually pleasing user interfaces, so as a final step, let's fine-tune the multiple row distribution. Currently, the definition uses dynamic values for the first column, which is width equals auto. The second column does not have a specific width attribute, but on minimum width, so it will span the remaining space. Alternatively to dynamic distribution of space, we can allow a weighted maximized consumption. We can see the first column's width to 1 star and the second column's width to 2 star. Both columns now will fill the available space, but the second column will only use two thirds of it. After a restart, we can compare the new and the old. Chapter 7 Summary Congratulations! You took a first deep dive into the core of data standard configuration. We will follow up diving into the dynamic property grid in Chapter 9. But to unveil all its capabilities, we need to deepen more details on labeling and options to switch client users' interface display languages. In Chapter 8, we are taking a look at the usage of different languages in Vault Data Standard.